All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, participating in this panel. Um, we have some very uh, distinguished uh, guests. Um, so I really first wanted to thank you for taking the time. Um, and for people who are uh, not here, this, uh, this will be broadcasted through multiple different channels. My name is Kash Shiftikar. I run uh, product and strategy for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. We call OCI. I think during this Oracle Open World, you heard a lot about OCI. Um, if you've been to Larry, uh, Larry's uh, keynote, um, lots of announcements, and we just finished the keynote on OCI products and features that Clay did. So lots of exciting things happening. Um, product is great, but I think the more important thing is why customers are making cert certain decisions uh, moving their applications onto a platform or building new applications. So what we are trying to do with a lot of these customer panels is get that story out. Uh, with that, um, customary slide. Uh, I wanted to welcome uh, four of our guests. So Doug Clare from um, Fair, I say it's FICO? FICO, Fair Isaac. I never knew it was Fair Isaac. So Doug Claire from FICO, I think FICO is something uh, that you are more familiar with as a company. Uh, Yogesh uh, from Cisco Systems at this Oracle Open World, you, you may have uh, heard a lot about you know, the work we're doing with Cisco, he's gonna go into a little bit more detail. Uh, Teddy Kervin from Martin Brower Company. The interesting thing about this company is, I, I he'll spend more, more time, uh, is this is the company that distributes all the McDonald's fries. So when I told my son that you know, we have some people who we work with and they're responsible for your fries distribution. He was like, whatever works, this thing never should go down. I need my fries. <laughs> okay, uh, Darren, uh, who's with Gonzaga University, this is a pretty interesting use case because we are um, we're spending a lot of time with, uh, with the public sector and they have a pretty interesting use case uh, and partner that they are working with. It's more of a story of a, a migration or upgrading uh, that in, uh, their applications over to OCI. So the way we would do it is we'll go through uh, um, all our speakers and they will go through a little bit introduction about themselves and their companies and then we'll go through a Q&A. The intention over here is to expand on the rationale and reason why they're making these business decisions to move to the cloud, number one, and number two, how is Oracle helping them, okay? Um, so I think with, with Doug, uh, you can give your introduction and then I have a video that I'll play. Great, thank you. Um, I'll pull the microphone over yep. here. So. We'll have to share this back and forth. Yeah, so I'm Doug Clare. I lead product marketing for FICO. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep my comments brief because we've got a little video that gives you some context for FICO. Uh, US consumers know us for the FICO score, uh, under, you know, used to underwrite credit um, in the majority of uh, credit transactions in the US. What most uh, people don't know is that we actually build decision management and analytics software uh, that you probably interface with, uh, you know, five, 10, 15 times a day and don't know it. So a lot of the things that you do on a daily basis are impacted by our decision management analytics software. That's our DNA. And I'll let the video tell the rest of the story and save the rest of my comments for later. Play, it's play, play. Imagine using data, analytics, and advanced AI to deliver a customer experience infused with intelligence. Behind the scenes and ahead of the curve to anticipate and adapt to make the right offer right now. Deliver overnight or respond in real time. FICO gives you the power to transform your customer's everyday experience with every touch on every step in their journey, making each transaction faster and safer, each interaction painless, moving the crew, the gate, the bags to the right place at the right time, optimizing operations because efficiency matters. Tirelessly, efficiently, seamlessly. 
FICO connects you to your customers. To deliver exactly what they need, when they need it. And the precision to predict what they'll need next. FICO, powering your today, inspiring your tomorrow. Well, thank you, Doug. Thank you. And next, uh, we move over to Yogesh. Um, um, Cisco, as I was uh, having a conversation with Yogesh, that's where I started my career. So I have a soft corner for networking, but these guys are doing some really amazing stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and let me know when I need to move this. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cash. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I work for Cisco. This is my third time back in Cisco. Uh, so I have a soft corner as well, looks like. Um, I lead a product called Titration. Uh, this is our cloud worker protection solution that we built. We've been mark, uh, shipping it for about two years. If you go to the next slide, I'll just uh, say a couple of things about what titration is. Fundamentally, what we're looking at doing is protecting and hardening every single workload, whether it's a VM or bare metal server or mainframe container on-premises in cloud. And the way titration does that is using machine learning and analytics. We look at a lot of data that feeds into our platform, and then we assess what your security posture looks like. We find the holes in that security posture, and then we take the intent on how you start tightening the security posture Titration then automatically pushes that policy out across multiple layers of your infrastructure. And we also monitor how your environment is changing. So as the changes happen, as more threat feeds come in, as new um, issues are identified, process behavior, vulnerabilities, et cetera, we feed that back into the platform and automatically do the remediation of security policy. So this is a very high scale solution. And when we shipped it, it was appliance that was shipped on-prem. And uh, we were missing out on the big chunk of our commercial end of the market. You can imagine a big, big data solution is not something that everybody can operate. And that's why we took it to uh, SaaS model uh, in April this year. And OCI is the platform we picked to run our uh, SaaS operations and run titration. Fundamentally, because we need the performance, we need the scale, we need the isolation, we need actually it's a security product. So it has to be completely isolated. We don't want any noisy neighbor problems and things like that. And ultimately, also the big part, and kudos to your team on that, was truly the culture. We took it from the time we decided we we're going to go SaaS to the day we actually shipped uh, was about two months. And that could not be done if we didn't have a true partner, very much like a startup-like culture that uh, we, we found in OCI, and that was fantastic. Thank you very much, Yogesh. Um, Teddy, I uh, spoke a little bit about why your company is really important to me. but. Maybe you can expand on uh, yourself and uh, you know what you. I, I know you guys do much beyond you know just uh, shipping fries for McDonald's. So it's a pretty pretty large franchise and business that you run. Yeah. So um, Martin Brower is a subsidiary of Race Holdings, who was, was our parent company. Um, Race Holdings owns a few other companies, uh, Race Beverage Group and Reinhardt Food Service, um, along with a uh, Great Lakes Coca Cola. Um, not unfortunately represented on this slide. Um, and we really um, expand across a lot of the brands that uh, are, are, are big in this country and, and, and uh, make us great. Um, so um, from a Martin Brower perspective, um, our largest customer is McDonald's, um, but they're not our only customer. Um, we, are, uh, we do most of the distribution for McDonald's. We do over 50%. Um, and uh, and we're a, we're still a growing company, so um, it's uh, it's an exciting time to be a part of Martin Brower. Um, one of our uh, one of our really challenges in going to OCI was how do we look at the future and how do we scale? Um, uh, that's a pretty typical answer, I think, for most companies looking to explore the cloud and looking to um, see what they can leverage. But to us, um, that was our main goal and our motivating factor. Um, how do we get out of our on-prem data center and, and grow and expand? Um, with the cloud and how do we restructure our architecture in order to be able to do that and achieve those goals. Um, OCI was a real logical partner for us. Um, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of um, Oracle applications. We partner with Oracle um, in our SOA suite, uh, ODI, um, and our Manhattan WMS application is um, run heavily with, a, with an Oracle database backend. Um, all of those factors were, were really the key component in choosing OCI and, and, and looking at them as a partner because who can support Oracle better than Oracle? 
So. And how long have you been with the company and what's, what, what, what's your specific role? So, uh, yeah, um, so I'm a software engineer on our uh, senior software engineer on our cloud infrastructure team. Um, and I've been with the company for just a little over two years now. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to Darren. Um, and Darren, same, uh, if you can give a little bit of background uh, about... Uh, you know, the university and yourself, that'd be great. Sounds good. Thank you for having me today. Uh, Darren Owsley, Chief Technology Officer from Gonzaga University. Uh, we're a private liberal arts school located in Spokane, Washington. We have about 7,500 students on um, this grad and undergrad. We have a, about a 93, 94% retention rate. Um, if, you, if you follow basketball at all, we're, we're very well known for our Bulldogs. Um, the AP rankings came out yesterday, we're number three. Um, our, our story started about 2015 for our cloud strategy. We came out up with a, a cloud strategy focus, and it, it really stemmed from a hardware, hardware failure on campus. Um, so we, we started planning to, to move to the cloud, to move to our, our data center out to the cloud. We have a very small data center on campus, and our goal is to eventually move everything off campus. Um, last year, 2017, early 2017, our ERP uh, vendor uh, came out with a mandatory upgrade, and we decided that it was our time to move off-prem for our ERP. Great. So maybe we can start with you and expand on that. Um, so from a university perspective, right, and you're dealing with um, many different applications that the students use and faculty uses, uh, how did you make the choice of, let's say, this application moving first to the cloud or the other? Because a lot of people in the room trying to figure out, okay, I need to start, but where do I start? You bet. Yeah. So for, for Gonzaga, we, uh, we had a very short window. Uh, 2017 January is when we found out about the upgrade. We started a proof of concept in the spring. We started researching and sending the engineering and operations teams to, uh, uh, to cloud trainings. Uh, we researched all the cloud providers and, and to be honest, we were, we were dead set on going with um, Amazon at the time. Um, last minute, Oracle came in, presented to us, and gave us a chance. Um, and after we re, uh, reviewed OCI, we, we found a perfect fit. Um, for us, the, the ERP uh, stems, HR, payroll, financial aid, advancement, it's, it's the entire, it's the entire campus is uh, involved with this. Um, so overall, it, it, it was time for us to do it. We didn't have a data center big enough to, to really build out to anything additional. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately, it was our ERP that was the first to go. Um, nothing like getting the biggest out of the way first. Interesting. Um, so Doug, I know we have been uh, working uh, on, on a lot of projects with you. Um, you've spoken a little bit about you know, the, some of the data analytics that you're building on top of uh, some of the database technology. Tell us a little bit about where we're at with different projects and how's the engagement going with Oracle so far? Yeah, um, happy to do it. Um, you know, first of all, so far so good. Uh, our, our story has a couple of key parts to it. So um, I'll kind of start at the beginning um, and then get to the, the more recent bits. Um, you know, FICO builds risk management software, fraud detection software for banks. We work in a lot of other industries as well, as you saw in the video. Uh, but that's really been a core part of our business for a long time. And banks, big banks, they deploy our software uh, on premise or at processing partners like First Data and Tesis. And um, in general, right, those deployments involve the Oracle database. Um, the big ones involve Exadata databases. And we've been partnered with Oracle for a long time uh, to make that real for our customers. So Oracle supports us in that. Um, the, particularly on Exadata for some of the large deployments, it's very performant and, um, and uh, you know, it's been a, gr a great, uh, I think a great benefit for our mutual clients around the world. Um, a couple of years ago, um, we had a very large deployment of uh, one of our compliance related uh, software products. Compliance meaning, you know, uh, anti-money laundering. This is, uh, you know, uh, one of the big compliance regimes that banks have to follow. Um, this deployment was going to be five times larger than any deployment we had ever done, and FICO works with the biggest banks in the world. This is a large, uh, a large Asian bank uh, that we were deploying this for. Um, we needed to test this software and, uh, and provide recommendations on scaling, and we needed to do it in a hell of a hurry. And um, uh, it was, it, our recommendation was to run it on Exadata, 
Uh, our previous uh, scalability testing had been focused on exadata for large, very large deployments, um, but this was kind of above and beyond, right? Like five times bigger than we had ever tested it for. Um, we called up Oracle. Uh, we asked them for some help. We actually asked if they could, you know, loan us a box for a while uh, to do this testing. And they said, well, we'll do one better. We'll just put it in the Oracle cloud. And I think we got access to it in under two weeks. Um, and we were able to do the testing. We got a lot of great advice from Oracle about uh, scalability, configuration, and things that we could do. And, um, and it, it worked great. We've since been back. We've done this again on the X7. Um, and uh, we've even doubled that performance now from, from where we started. So I think our first, our first experience with the Oracle Cloud uh, was really a story, a success story of teaming with Oracle. Um, you guys, you know, you, you came in with the cavalry um, and, uh, and really helped us out of a jam. And it opened our eyes to some of the possibilities of, of working with Oracle. Um, so today, we announced a partnership with Oracle, kind of unrelated to, to that, um, that initial experience around bringing our, uh, what we call the decision management platform for streaming analytics uh, to the Oracle cloud. Um, so, you know, performance is key there. Uh, we're talking about real-time uh, decisioning analytics for retail and supply chain. So driving, you know, high-scale, real-time, high-value customer interactions um, hopefully optimized with supply chain and, and back office on the back end. Um, so performance is, is critical and Oracle, um, Oracle performs. But a couple of the other things that are really, I think, important to us in this context are around, you know, essentially being Oracle's partner. Oracle has a, a nice uh, footprint in retail and supply chain. Uh, we're looking to grow our business in retail and supply chain. And for us, it's, it's not only about the performance, the compatibility infrastructure, the ability to uh, deploy in the Oracle Cloud. It's also about being part of the team, right? It's about um, being in a position where we can, uh, we can work with Oracle and Oracle's other ISV partners to bring value. So uh, for us, it's also a lot about the context of, um, of, uh, of being part of that ecosystem, so. Well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Yogesh, from your perspective, you know, the, if you look at Cisco, Cisco has portfolio of, you know, converged infrastructure appliances um, that, that probably I think you guys mentioned you started off with that uh, customized for for your specific customer but maybe you can share the light on that how how are, how are you making decisions between you know deploying on-prem and you talk about multi-cloud number one and also a little bit uh, that Doug touched on which I think is very interesting and this is the trend that we see is people are building their businesses, right? Their businesses that they are offering to their consumers, uh, in case of Doug and yourself, on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And we see a common partnership uh, as we go to market. So maybe these two angles, I think, will be very helpful for the audience to kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. context. Um, so I think the first uh, iteration of the iteration that we launched and we brought to the market was on-prem, was yep. built on the UCS infrastructure and appliance form factor. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do from get-go was have a SaaS offering. And the reason for that is if you go down to the commercial segment of the market, uh, there is appliance is not something that uh, there's a lot of appetite for. And it's not because of the cost, which is a factor, but how do you operationalize that? It's, uh, there's not a whole lot of talent to manage security and to manage a big data type of solution. Um, that drives the cost, and that's the cost that we wanted to take off the table. So SaaS was something that was very strategic for us and you know, part of the Cisco strategy for the last uh, several years now. We're shifting more to a software subscription-based company rather than being a hardware vendor alone. Are we going up the stack inside the application when we talk about security, when we talk about uh, optimization, performance, everything is going up the stack. So that was a part of the strategy for us. And uh, in order for us to do that, we really needed something that scales. Uh, a lot of our customers, even in the commercial, what we call commercial select, is actually pretty large enterprises. Um, so you have to be able to monitor thousands of workloads, billions of records, be able to process that at scale in real time. Uh, because it's a security solution, it's, it's not good enough to find a hole in a security posture two days later. You have to find things as they're happening. And we wanted something that could give us that kind of performance and a guaranteed performance. That was part of the reason we went, went to um, Oracle um, with OCI. But there's another aspect of it. If you look at the, the customers that we're targeting and the yeah. customers that you have, there's a pretty large, you draw the Venn diagram, it's pretty common. 
Uh, and a lot of these customers are coming to us and saying, I already have workloads that are sitting in cloud. I have a hybrid environment where I'm trying to figure out what can go to cloud for w whatever things I still want to keep on-prem for whatever reasons that might be financial and to be a little bit laggers in, in that area. And I want to have a platform that can work across the two, but also wherever my workloads la are landing, I want to be able to make sure that I can protect those. So there's a lot of uh, synergy in terms of go-to-market, in terms of how we actually go to the customer sites. You can actually deploy your applications in the cloud. Oh, by the way, you can also protect this application because there's another layer, which is also happens to be running in um, Oracle Cloud. So that's the aspect that we're very excited Great. about. Thank you. And, and Teddy, maybe from your perspective, uh, I know we, uh, we, you also mentioned that we started with, uh, with Manhattan uh, in, in a couple of locations. So maybe give a little bit inside view of, you know, like now you're asked, you made a decision to move to a certain cloud platform. How do you project manage it? How do you approach, you know, migrating these applications? Maybe if you can give a, a little bit inside view of that yeah, um, from a customer perspective. Yeah. So our biggest challenge was not only how do we get these applications to the cloud, but how do we do it in an automated fashion so that we're ready to scale? Um, that was a big change in the culture within our organization. Um, there, there was very much a mindset of when your infrastructure is built and your application is built, you do it once and that's, and that's it. You never have to worry about it again. Um, with the cloud, we're, we're really moving towards a changing environment where your infrastructure and your application design, everything is so fluid as to how you're going to approach this. How you do things today may not be how you do things in the future. Where your applications are running today, um, you may want to move that halfway across the country, or you may need to expand geographically into new, into new regions. And that's a big challenge for us, particularly with our um, WMS application. As we're looking, WMS for people who uh, sorry, warehouse management yeah. system with our Manhattan warehouse management system, um, which run, which essentially runs our entire warehouse, is how do we get this? How do we build this in a way that we can scale and that it's maintainable? Um, and then if we need to uh, expand into new regions or get new business or grow as a company, we can do so organically. Um, and, and Oracle um, invests heavily in their Terraform provider, and we're sort of famous for saying if it's not in the Terraform provider, it's really not for us. Uh, the key to our success um, on the cloud has been automation. Um, it used to take us a week, uh, week at a time to deploy a single warehouse management system um, on, the, on the server um, built from scratch. Now we can do the whole thing in 45 minutes. I mean, that power and that flexibility for us uh, was key. And um, that has kind of set been the, 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 the cornerstone for expanding. So as we look at moving other applications, you know, how do we move JD Edwards? How do we move um, our integration platforms? Um, that has really become the model for us as to, to how to do it and how to do it right. So something we're very proud of because, um, you know, scaling for many companies and, and automation is tough, you know, especially for a lot of IT departments who um, maybe are used to general system administration. Um, we're moving into a new phase of, uh, of, of our careers here in IT where DevOps is really going to be ruling the world. And um, that's definitely something that we're, uh, we're leveraging to take advantage of. And I think what is very interesting, I keep on having a conversation with a lot of customers is, uh, for example, in Cisco's case, you know, you completely rewrite the application from scratch and you build it on cloud native constructs. But not every situation is the same. It's not because people want to get there. It's just because the state of the application. So you have, uh, in your case, it was Manhattan, and you have to sort of, the marketing people call it move and improve, like lift and shift that application over to the Oracle Cloud. Um, from, from your perspective, uh, Darren, I, I think in your case, it was a similar story. Talk to us a little bit about the application that we were talking about. Uh, I assume it was Banner. Uh, what does that do, and how was the experience sort of, you know, from an engagement with OCI team, and then how did you end up, you know, handling this project briefly? You bet. So, yeah. um, coming into the project, like I said, we had a, we have one data center on campus. Um, a couple of the goals co um, out, coming out of this project: one was security, and two is business continuity. Uh, we knew we had to get this this infrastructure built out so off prem, whether it be OCI or some other cloud cloud provider. The ERP itself is um, a student financial uh, financial aid alumni so it does it covers every constituent on campus um, and for us we we did a business assessment in 2015 and out of that business assessment we knew we were not 
um, living up to our customers' expectations. We, we did not have disaster recovery, um, RTOs. Uh, we did, we, to, to tell you the truth, we, don't, we didn't know if we could deliver a system failure or not, we, if we could recover. Um, so coming into this project, it was very important for us to, to be able to build out disaster recovery, have the business continuity, high availability, um, and it was, it was important to our customers as well. Um, overall, it's been, a, it's been a great partnership with Oracle. Um, like I said before, they came in really at the last minute. Um, our reps are amazing. Our support has been terrific through the entire project. We had a very t uh, short timeline. We started in December and went live in July. Um, and throughout the entire project, we had Oracle support the entire way. Um, really good support. I think what will also be interesting for people to know is we generally talk about uh, uh, you know, some workloads sort of going to, uh, to the cloud or starting from, from this particular application. But in your case, if we can go around the, around the clock, the application, that initial application that we are talking about, that you have transitioned or moved over to a CI, how critical they are to the, your business. And you get your business is in multiple different domains. You bet. For you, I think that's quite important for people to understand because what I'm finding, I travel all over the place, is some very critical applications are moving to the cloud, right? So. Absolutely, and, th and this application itself is our most critical application. This is our foundation of Gonzaga Technical. Um, it what supports, does that application do? Like? It supports student registrations, financial aid, payroll, HR. It supports the entire university. So if we do have an outage, it affects every single constituent on campus. Great, and maybe yourself as a... <laughs> Yeah, so what, uh, what we're using OCI for is a product that we've taken to market. And uh, if you think about the consumer preference or the customer preference on how they want to consume this technology or security technology, typically about 40 to 60% of our market is already has a preference for cloud. Uh, they don't want to have an appliance. They don't want to have an IT department. They want to just have a portal, which is providing them the outcome that they're driving for rather than giving technology. Like CISOs would literally tell me, don't sell me technology, sell me an outcome. Uh, that's what iteration is for. So for us, it's, it was about expanding that addressable market into that space. Now, of course, we could have built our own cloud and, and do all that stuff, but that's not the core value. My team's focus is building security technology. Uh, we don't want to be in the business of operating data centers, and that was the main reason for us to uh, go with cloud and go with OCI. And I think what I also find really interesting is that being in Cisco, I've worked there for a couple of years. Um, you know, it's core infrastructure business. It's like you know, deployed on customers, you know, campuses and. I think this is where Cisco is really transitioning into a different phase. And um, uh, just for everybody's knowledge, I mean, you guys are in production, you have customers. So this is not like an application that's running in dev test. Yep. So these are actually end customers for Cisco's next generation transformation. I think this is one of the key uh, applications that you have that is running on production. So, so actually, since we went to market uh, on, in SaaS in April, um, our SaaS business is outgrowing our on-premises yeah. business today. That's great. And I, I think from, from a Martin Broad perspective as well, because I had a chat with some of your folks, uh, some of our engineers were working with you, how critical it is that this, uh, tell, us, tell people a little bit about how critical this app is. Right? So what happens if this thing doesn't work? Um, it, it, I know my, my son wouldn't get fries, but beyond that. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but beyond your son not getting fries, <laughs> um, the, any downtime to our business um, is critical. We have centers um, operating all over the world um, 24 hours a day, uh, and uh, Mc, you know McDonald's, among, as well as our other customers, um, uh, they uh, they deserve the kind of the quality of service of being able to deliver their product on time. And when we're not doing that, they're not making money, and we're not making money, and we're losing a lot of money. Um, DR is absolutely crucial to our business, and um, we had been doing that on premise. Um, we had been doing a, a, a I would say a fairly good job of it. Um, going to Oracle Cloud, it was just a, a matter of making sure that we had our DR built in. Um, you have a lot of redundancy built in within region um, in OCI. Um, we expanded on that and used multiple regions within the United States um, to really hedge our bets and make sure that we have that high availability in DR um, built in for our applications. Uh, so that, that is crucial to our business. And Doug, I, I think from your perspective, expand uh, on your application as well. I think uh, 
with us, there are multiple different apps, but I think we launched something recently about some of the existing applications uh, that are running, how critical they are to your business. Yeah, so I think um, one thing that I think is important to us, right? I mean, the, the partnership we announced today about our decision management platform streaming application, um, it isn't about FICO moving a workload into the Oracle Cloud. It's, it's about FICO um, bringing a solution into the Oracle Cloud and our trust that or that there are retail and supply chain customers out there who are who are keen to use it um, as we've had conversations about this project and others um, you know we've been we've been uh, quite convinced about the robustness of the oracle cloud we've experienced it ourselves particularly in the project i referenced earlier about um, very rapidly spinning up a very large infrastructure uh, and being able to scale that get through testing uh, very quickly the level of service and support that we got from Oracle um, in, uh, in in working that project, um, you know, uh, gives us a lot of confidence that uh, that Oracle's uh, that Oracle's customers are getting that through OCI across the board. It gives us a lot of reason to want to partner and put our product uh, out there in the Oracle cloud and take it to market so that our our clients can uh, can get advantage of it. One of the other things that I think is worth mentioning is just the um, is the approach that Oracle is taking with uh, w with this, right? And it's a willingness to work not only within the Oracle Cloud, but to integrate with legacy on-prem applications, to to integrate and connect to other cloud uh, cloud solution providers. Uh, just a kind of a, a universal flexibility around that, as well as uh, Oracle's Cloud at customer. Uh, ideas, right? So um, this is something that we think is really, uh, really important. Um, everybody, I think, gets the value of the cloud, understands it, um, but are at different stages in their willingness to go there. Um, some things are easy to put in the cloud, other things maybe not so easy to put in the cloud. And there's a lot of benefits, I think, of, of uh, cloud adoption um, that can be had through, um, through the OCI cloud at customer construct. And that's another reason why we're we're excited to partner with Oracle because we think that that construct itself can have a lot of legs, and we think we'll will attract customers, um, you know, not only to use our application in the Oracle Cloud, but in the kind of the Cloud at Customer variant of that um, as well. So it's a it's a great idea, and we're excited to be there. And I think the the common theme that we're seeing here, and this is uh, this is what I repeat to all the customers and our partners, is that if you look at the end customers over here, you know you have Martin Brower and you have Gonzaga. They are talking about a third party app that they are using, right? One for warehouse management and the other one for student registration. So what we are also doing in the background is making sure that we are tying that ecosystem together. So as we are working with our customer, we are also working with who they're buying their software from and tying it all together. And frankly speaking, differentiating by providing a platform that actually does not compete with their customers and partners. And, and, and I, I don't need to say in detail, there are some cloud providers who are in the business of competing with their customers and partners. So that's certainly not the strategy that we have. Now from a feature perspective, um, you know, uh, if you heard the announcements today, we. Uh, we launched uh, new shapes uh, with AMD, uh, very low cost, as you can see, three cents um, per, per hour per core. Um, then we have launched uh, InfiniBand uh, latencies, uh, new SKUs on Intel machines. Uh, we're launching GPUs. And I think from your perspective, you know, on the database, uh, a lot of autonomous database, uh, warehousing, and OLTP. So um, talk to us about, you know, areas which you want Oracle to keep on giving you the new features, the areas of interest for you, uh, current and future. Any, any thoughts on that? Go ahead. You can start with whatever feature makes sense to you, security, high performance computing, bare so, metal, VMs. Yes. So for Gonzaga, we, uh, we're, we're so new to this that feature-wise, we, we have everything that we need right now. Um, there are new features rolling out every week, it seems like. Um, I know that you guys are announcing new feature sets that we've been looking at. Such They've as, been a little busy, yeah. This yeah, exactly. Uh, cross region, um, yeah. data guarding, et cetera. Um, so feature-wise, uh, maybe some load balancing features um, to see load traffic behind the behind the load balancers itself. Um, other than that, we're we're happy customers. Good. Uh, there's a couple of things that we are very excited about. So first, we are using your uh, uh, web app. 
firewall yes. today. It's getting embedded in the load balancer. So very exciting about that. Just operationally makes it much easier for us to consume the technology. So less knobs that we have, better it is for us. We have a pretty small operations team. We want to keep it that way. Um, the second part I'm very excited about is uh, a lot of enhancements you guys are doing on telemetry uh, for two reasons. Number one, uh, that telemetry is how we can automate all the operations. Again, keep, want to keep the operations team very, very light. So more the infrastructure gives us information, uh, we can essentially automate all of that. So that's one. Uh, number two, the reason we're excited about telemetry is because that telemetry is also critical for us to understand the security posture within that platform. So if we have customers running an OCI, we can actually say, based on what the cloud infrastructure is telling us, we can tell you whether these workloads are behaving in the way that's consistent with their expected behavior or not. And we can actually do something about it. And that goes back to the partnership and go-to-market. Right. So for us in the features, we're looking at anything that allows us to scale easier. Um, there's a lot of uh, flexible scaling. Um, Features coming real soon, at, and I think even now there's some some mm -hmm. that have just been released. Um, so those are key for us. Um, anything that gives us more options. So um, the big piece about automation is the number of options we provide ourselves, and the the number of options that more options that OCI provides us, the better. Um, so hearing things like um, uh, some of the new um, shapes that are coming to OCI, uh, those are crucial for us. But uh, more importantly, are the things that are going on behind the scenes uh, to keep our instances running. Um, things like the hypervisors um, automatically shifting um, instances, uh, you know, those are the types of things that we want to see uh, continue to go forward as uh, things that are going to really benefit us from a stability standpoint. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll add on to a little bit. We um, one of the things that's really critical for for us in a lot of the real time applications that we support, um, we we build uh, we build some algorithmically intensive applications at FICO that leverage a lot of, uh, a lot of both real-time and, um, and uh, stored information. Um, referencing that stored information in real-time can be a real trick when you're dealing with, um, you know, time frames that you count on, you know, milliseconds you can count on one hand. And IOPS performance is really a big deal for us. And one of the reasons that we've been uh, working with Oracle as long as we have um, you know, particularly with Exadata infrastructure, is because of that IOPS performance. It's great. So this isn't a this isn't a complaint at all. But you know, continuing to see that progress um, is something we'll always be interested in. And I think Oracle's done a great job there. Our our clients rely on on that performance. And uh, as we saw with the X7, um, you know, we've seen that improve yet again. So um, you know, keep up the good work. That's the that's the answer. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, in closing, what I would say is that, you know, a little bit uh, sneak peek under the cover of what's happening in the engineering operations. There's definitely a big transformation at Oracle. Um, Oracle has been powering some of the major organizations for the past 40 years. But more recently, as this transition to cloud happens, the way you interact with the customer, which I think was alluded, uh, mentioned by most of the speakers here, you, you got to change, you got to adapt. You have to have a different way of doing business with the, with the customers. And we certainly realize that. So at least uh, um, in, in, in our team OCI, which I'm part of, uh, we have a bunch of people who've come from, from Oracle and some other places, and we are just like, we're not going to stop. We want to make sure that the customer experience is awesome. But I think the, the, the interesting part that we see is this, is this is a pretty challenging space for us to solve some really complex problems and not just the, only the DevOps sort of the place. I think we can, we can do that, but enterprise applications, critical applications that require 100% availability in some cases, these are hard mathematical and design problems. And then coupled on top of that is the customer experience, which we still want to be startup as much as possible. So I think uh, keep us honest how we engage um, and looking forward to other customers sort of you know, interacting with us. Only thing I would ask uh, in the end is, you know what, People think, uh, you know, there are perception issues about, you know, certain cloud provider versus this cloud provider. Take our cloud for a spin. That's what I tell everyone. You know, the cloud speaks for itself. Try it out. Interact with our team OCI. If you're not understanding anything, we're willing to help you out. With that, I really appreciate it. You have helped us uh, not only improve our engagement process, but also helped us really build good products. Every one of you, you know that. 
you part, some of you are part of our technical advisory board. So really appreciate that and uh, looking forward to working with you for years to come. Thank you. Thank you everybody for participating. Thanks.